Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be testing out the epilogue sidecar on a night drive. One of my commenters watching my previous videos had asked for this test and I'll be driving this highway during the night. In honest truth, uh, it's, there won't be too many findings on this drive because in my experience using open pilot from comment in the past is that the difference between night and day isn't too different. If anything, sometimes the, the reflective markers on the road actually help the cameras see the lanes better. And I think the brake lights in contrast with the low light also help the model or AI that the sidecar is running on distinguish between the cars and the roads. I, I think it's just for what it's doing on the highway, the low light isn't so much of an issue. And my car also has radar enabled for the cruise control. So it has vision and radar working together in fusion. So really not much of a difference. And I kind of wish this van was, wasn't going so slow, but it's okay. It's nighttime. No one has to go anywhere. This may or may not be one of my last tests with the sidecar epilogue since when epilogue sent me this unit, the agreement was I would be returning it within a month back to them, which I'm really sad about because it is a great product in my opinion for my needs. And it's hard to see because of the low light, but I don't have my hands on the wheel. I'm not pressing my gas or my brake. I'm just sitting here looking at the road. There is a driver monitor camera looking at me to make sure that I'm paying attention. So I'm really just hanging out here, looking at the road, making sure that things are okay. I could possibly test out the driver monitor system right now, but I'll wait until we get past this one section of the highway because there is an interchange and there are some late merging that could happen. We do have a curve here coming up, not many reflectors on the ground, but the system is still able to determine where it needs to be in the lane quite well. apologize for the wind noise. I've got a roof rack and uh, it vibrates at certain wind and direction and whatnot and also road conditions too. Maybe if I slow down the car it'll be a little better. So I'm going to reduce my maximum speed right now. I have it set to 72 miles an hour. I'm going to bring it back down to maybe speed limit. Let's see what it does then. It is quieter, but it could have also just been the road to... Let me pass this car and go on this slower lane did a assisted uh, lane change here, so I'm not touching the wheel when I did that lane change, and it's nighttime and it's doing it just fine. And we do have a, uh, not a fork, but two lanes merging at this very moment, and it's, it's, it's placing itself in the lane where it needs to be. As you see, because there was no one in front of us exiting, there was an exit lane that the system ignored because, oh, 
So I was actually looking at my speedometer while I was talking there and it triggered the driver monitor system. So that was interesting. And let me actually try that again. So I'm gonna I'm gonna look down at my speedometer. So I'm looking down, I'm looking down, still looking down, still looking down, still looking down, still looking down. I looked up momentarily, still looking down, still looking down, and still looking down. Still looking down. Wow, maybe that was a false positive because I'm still looking down at the speedometer, not looking at the road. Interesting. I wonder what triggered it. Maybe it was uh, the angle of my head. Let me see. I'm going to kind of look to the left to see if it. Okay, there you go. Maybe, okay, so I'm not sure if it, maybe it's this camera, but like it seems to prioritize head posture over the direction of my gaze, which I find a little, it's, it is different from my experience with open pilot and common devices where I could keep my head straight, but, but look down at my speedometer or even at my radio and it would trigger the driver monitor. So that was a, that's a little different in my little annoying test where I kept on saying, look it down, look it down. I, I was literally looking down at my speedometer, which would have, which, which, which had triggered uh, a common device in the past. I'm going to exit right now and turn around and, and uh, come back the other way. And maybe I can test out the driver monitor system again. And here's kind of a somewhat severe bend. Yeah, so it did kind of do a late turn there, but I am going the maximum speed of the highway. But I mean, it made it, but not as gracefully as maybe I'd want. And I turned down the speed and I put it down to like 45 miles an hour. And so not, not the best lane marking. We do have some reflective strips, but the system seems to be handling quite well. And I'm going to take over now though, because I am going to get in this lane here to form a U-turn. And then I'll try to turn it on as soon as I can. Okay, with me kind of crawling, I'm going to turn it on. So you can have the gas on and press resume. And it actually just turns on on its own, which is very similar behavior to the combo pilot when I had it. And I'm just going to let it cruise at 45 miles an hour right now. So interesting little scenario. We've only got lane markings on the center and we have a barricade on the right and the system is placing itself um, at what I believe to be an appropriate place. And as I say that, it actually kind of moved a little to the, to the right, but I think now we're going to have a lane marking coming up here and it'll center itself again. And I'm going to uh, boost it up to the speed limit because we are entering the highway. I'm going to do an assisted lane change, so no hands here. And that was a peculiar maneuver because we were in a we were in a bend or a curve while we did it, and so I'm sure it, it probably wasn't an ideal situation to be activating the uh, assisted cruise or sorry, the assisted lane change. So we're back on the highway now, and we do have a lead car in front of us, but this particular stretch here is well marked, so I don't have any doubt that the system can handle this area here. And I have reduced my speed to uh, 65 miles an hour as the maximum. And I think it is helping the, the wind noise that was uh, occurring when I was going much faster prior. Now we have two lanes merging and we, we do see that the system stays more to the left where it was uh, before. So that's good. It's not just hunting for a center of a lane and uh, 
whenever you use a system like that, it is quite jarring. So we do have a Model 3, and when you're using the, the default open pilot, or sorry, when, when you're using the default autopilot on the, mod, uh, on the Tesla, whenever you have a, a fork or, a, or, or two merging lanes, it does try to find center uh, pretty aggressively which is much different when you're using FSD. With FSD, it, it knows which it knows um, your desire, aka like which like lane you want to be in, and so it, it makes appropriate choices then. But with autopilot, it the only thing it cares about is being in the center. And if that, if that means that you have uh, two lanes merging, and there there will be that moment where the the, the lane quote unquote is much wider, it'll it'll hunt for that center pretty aggressively. But I think before, just a moment ago, before you, we did see an exit, let's see, and um, they didn't take it because there was no one taking it. But I'm assuming that, like, for instance, if this van were to take an exit right now, I, I bet that the system would probably follow it because, again, uh, sidecar, or sorry, Epilogue sidecar is using open pilot. And in the past, open pilot would also follow a lead car that was exiting. Not all the time, but it would have it would happen more times enough that uh, in those moments, I actually would have my hand ready uh, to to correct that, that that wrong decision by the the software. All right, so we have him exiting right now, and see how it's following slightly. Okay, it didn't follow. Maybe it was too far, but. I was again ready for that moment to take over in case I tried to follow that lead car. If this video has been too long for you already, I think the, the main takeaway is that if your commute or your normal drives has you driving during the night and you're wondering how the system will perform when you're in low light conditions, I believe it is safe to say that the system should perform quite well as a, an assist for driving on the highway. Now, if you're driving, hold on one second, I have to, I'm gonna actually turn off the system right now. We do have a merge here. This merge is not the most pleasant. Okay, so I, I did slow down because it, it, it does merge together. It's not the, the best designed road. And I'm gonna activate it now. Okay, so now I'm back on. Um, and then going back to what I was talking about, I think I was mentioning, yes, so when you're driving in the night and if you're just doing basic highway, I, I don't doubt that the system will perform very well for you. However, if you are wanting to use it on, on back roads that don't have very good lane markings, uh, I, would, I would hesitate to be using the system because you, in, in my experience, a lot of the back roads, I guess it depends on where you live, but if they do have a lot of undulations in the hills, for instance, it's gonna have a very hard time understanding where it needs to be and it, really, it, it might get a little dangerous. So this guy's exiting right now. Let's see if my car will follow it. I have a feeling it will. So I'm gonna have my hands on the ready and he's gonna be exiting now. Oh, that oh, see, yeah. do you see how it it literally was influenced by the behavior of the lead car? And believe it or not, because Epilogue Sidecar uses Open Pilot, that was following the behavior of the lead car was almost a feature that Open Pilot had. I'm gonna. See, will he speed up? No, I'm gonna slow down. I'm, I just, I just disabled the system. I'm now in full control, and now I'm going to resume. 
but as you're seeing if you're if you're driving in the slow lane with these assist systems these uh these driving assist systems you will have a lot of interventions so i i think if you've watched my previous video my my best suggestion if you're using these if you're using any of these systems not even just a uh, sidecar um get in a middle lane where you're not having to navigate um with people exiting and merging uh, and you can also kind of drive at a slower speed okay so again so yeah so if you notice there you got influenced again by that person moving into a different lane so keep that in mind so again if you're going to be using this system or any system like this make sure to stay away from the slow lane so if you notice there there was no lead car so the system didn't care it just kept on going straight but that was a kind of a scary example of that individual who i mean we can't blame the system so much because that person also it seemed like they were lost and they just kind of did like a super late exit but it is it is kind of a downside of i guess what open pilot has done by allowing the the ai or the model to be influenced by the lead car and what and what behavior they're they're exhibiting because one of the main benefits for uh mimicking the behavior of the lead car is that if there's absolutely no lane markings on the road the the open pilot will actually just follow the lead car and and and, and mimic what it's doing but but as you as we've seen there are definitely downsides to that because if they're exiting so right now so he didn't exit there was no there was no like moving over for that exit because we weren't exiting or, or that person in front of us was was not exiting let's keep the exit now because that's what they did and so we're still again we're going straight um so yeah i think this is going to be the end of the video but again epilogue sidecar riding on open pilot will work great during the night and as another takeaway if you're using any of these systems whether it's Tama open pilot or epilogue sidecar just be prepared to have the steering being influenced by cars that are driving in front of you so if you can try to drive in the middle lanes because it'll just make your life easier and a lot more chill I do assisted lane change here and thank you so much for watching and maybe I might be able to sneak in one last video but for now this may or may not be the last video I have with sidecar so I hope you all had fun while I had it because I sure did and maybe I'll see you all in the future. Laters.